So now we're going to talk about M30, which is another one of the many globular clusters in the Messier catalog. And this one apparently, I understand, is a bit of a sore point with people doing the Messier Marathon, because it's often the last object in the Messier Marathon where someone is trying to observe the entire Messier catalog in one night. So you miss M30 at the end of your Messier Marathon and the whole night has essentially gone to waste. M30 is like about 20% of the globular clusters in the Milky Way system, what we call a core collapse cluster. So even William Herschel, observing it back in 1814, noticed and remarked upon the fact that as he looked towards the center of this globular cluster, there just seemed to be more and more and more stars. So while many globular clusters, as you approach the center, their light profile sort of flattens off into a sort of core, this one just keeps going and going and going and going. What we think will happen is that over time, energy is transferred from the center of the globular cluster to the outskirts. So a star may pass by another star, pick up some energy, and be transferred out to the outskirts or even ejected from the globular cluster altogether. The stars in the center just keep getting closer and closer and closer, while the stars towards the outside keep getting ejected or puffed at more and more and more. And this will eventually result in just that sort of compact, dense collection of stars in the core of this globular cluster. From what I've said, it seems like this is an inevitable end for all globular clusters, that they will all suffer this core collapse. And in a sense, this is kind of analogous to a protostar forming. A protostar will form when gas collapses, and it's only when it collapses so dense that thermonuclear reactions are ignited that there's enough energy to counterbalance that collapse. So since actually we only observe one in five globular clusters having this core collapse density of stars, what is serving as the energy source in a globular cluster, keeping it from collapsing altogether? And the answer to that is binary stars. A large fraction of the stars in our galaxy are actually in binary pairs. That means we have two stars orbiting about a common center of mass. Now in a globular cluster, if you have a binary system, inevitably they will interact with other stars. You'll get these very complicated three star systems formed. But the most likely outcome for that is for the third star to be ejected altogether and gain energy, be flung off and the resulting binary pair contract a little closer and get more and more tightly bound. And this can happen to many, many different stars. And so one binary getting closer and closer with each stellar billiard game it plays is essentially providing energy to more and more stars in the cluster and actually puffing up and halting that core collapse. If I was writing a story about each globular cluster, and I know there are so many of them, what sets M30 apart from the rest? Anything? Uh, I think it's a pretty boring old cluster. Um, it's pretty in the sense that it's a lovely collection of stars. What sets it apart, not uniquely, but puts it in a class of interesting globular clusters within the Milky Way, is that it displays this core collapse structure with this large concentration of stars towards the middle.